Welcome, friends and family. I know you've traveled far to be here, and uh, I know you wouldn't have missed this for the world. So on behalf of the bride and groom, thanks so much for coming. Before we do anything else, pray. Father, we are so grateful for your presence here. We love you, and we love that you uh, designed marriage. You love marriage. And we are honored to all be here to see how your new work continues to grow. So God, would you continue to protect us all and lead Grant and Lauren in their new relationship and that you would be glorified today. We pray this in your name, Lord. Amen. Who gives Lauren away? Her mother and I. Excellent. Please be seated. Ready? Ephesians 5, 22 and 27 says, Wives, be subject to your own husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ also is the head of the church, he himself being the Savior of the body. But as the church is subject to Christ, so also wives ought to be subject to their husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself up for her, so that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of the water with the word, that he might present to himself the church in all her glory, having no spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she would be holy and blameless. This passage on marriage appears to be about the rules for being a husband and wife, but it's actually about a husband and a wife striving to copy the example of the most incredible marriage there is, Jesus and his church. The husband is striving to act as loving and sacrificial as Christ. The wife is striving to act as loving and submissive to the church, to, uh, to, as, the, as the church. There is never a thought that Christ was going to start bossing his bride around and ordering his bride to do another load of dishes while he hangs out with his friends. And the bride never decided that she was tired of being oppressed and held down by the man. No, she's continually grateful and he sacrifices. It's this simple. Christ loves his bride by laying down his life. Husbands love their wives by laying down their lives. Christ's first priority is seeing his bride be radiantly and beautiful with holiness. Husbands' first priority is seeing their bride become radiantly beautiful with holiness. The bride of Christ is grateful for him and lovingly submits to Christ. Wives are grateful for their husbands and lovingly submit to them. The bride of Christ has a deep desire to follow Christ's leadership, to advance God's kingdom. Wives have a deep desire to follow their husband's leadership and advance God's kingdom. This is marriage, not a power struggle, but love, sacrifice, partnering. And then there's grace and forgiveness for all the ways that we fall short. Grant and Lauren, this is awesome to be here today, to see what God is doing. I can't help but think of Isaiah 43, 18 and 19, where God says, don't call to mind the former things, or ponder things of the past. Then God declares that he will do something new, that is already springing and growing, and springing forth and growing. And that from our human perspective, we could never imagine it to be accomplished, which takes me back, Grant, to the time you were telling me how back in high school, you could have never gotten a date with Lauren Putty. It was laughable. And yet here we are. And then I also think of how both God has transformed both of you so much. No one would have believed back then, Lauren, that you would become a radical follower of Jesus and laying down your life for the nation. No one would have believed back then, Grant, that you would become one of the most genuine and honest followers of Jesus Christ I know. But here we are. God has begun to do his amazing work of something incredibly new. And it's not the way I think of new. When I think of new, I think of a new tool or a new friend or maybe some new business venture. But when God does something new, it's a new life, a new mission, new promises, new expectations, new hope. Everything about this is based in God's newness. This new life that God has made is best compared to a seed that grows. This relationship has sprung forth and is growing and will bear much good fruit. That's the point of a seed, isn't it? It's not about being planted or watered or being transformed. It's about bearing much fruit. It's the old question. How many seeds are in an apple? Five? Six? How many apples are in one seed? It's unthinkable. And that's what we believe God is doing here. So as a community, we're here today to celebrate Grant and Lauren and their union that is springing forth. You have all been invited by them to be here because they know that you all love them. 
So I'm not going to ask you to call every day, but as friends and family, will you commit to supporting Grant and Lauren? Life is able to deal out many reasons to be discouraged. Would you be willing to bring encouragement in these times? Life can become confusing and disorienting. Would you all be willing to bring truth and love to help make life clear again? Would you be willing to pray for them? And would you be willing to do everything in your power to keep this union strong, solid, and fruitful? If so, say I will. Grant and Lauren, do you understand that you are about to enter into a covenant between each other and God? And that will be in effect as long as you both live? And that in this commitment you will need not only God's spirit, but also God's people that are here? If so, say I do. I do. Grant, I want to solemnly give you three charges. First, never put Lauren above Christ. Over the years of marriage, it will not be your incredible willpower that keep your heart tender and sacrificial. It will be keeping Jesus as Lord in your heart. Second, never put anyone else above Lauren. In all the work God will give you, in all the friendships you'll have, and the great missions God will give you both to make disciple makers, never put any person or ministry event above Lauren. And lastly, never forget your great need of the Savior and His mercy, forgiveness, and grace. It is in remembering this truth that you will have the humility and courage to confess all your shortcomings and embrace the Lord in all of hers. Will you commit to do this? If so, say I will. I will. Lauren, I want to solemnly give you three charges. First off, never put Grant above Christ. Submitting to Grant's leadership, hopefully it will be joyful. But do this not only because it's joyful, but because you love Jesus Christ, and He will reward you. Secondly, never put anyone else above Grant. The Lord hopefully will one day will give you a bustling house full of children and a thriving ministry and who knows what else. In all the responsibility you both will have, never let anyone come between you and him. And lastly, never forget that you also need Jesus Christ to live out the gospel daily so you both can see and experience God's love, joy, and forgiveness play out through each of you. Will you commit to do this? If so, say I will. I will. To symbolize covenant, at the marriage, we use a ring. So if you guys want to get the rings ready. The wedding ring is a symbol of eternity since it has no beginning and it has no end. It's an outward sign of the inward spiritual bond which unites you in an eternal life. And now as a token of your love, Grant, please take the ring and put it on Lauren's finger and repeat after me. I grant. I grant. Choose you, Lauren. Choose you, Lauren. To be my lawfully wedded wife. To be my lawfully wedded wife. From this day forward. From this day forward. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. For better and for worse. For better and for worse. For richer or for poor. For richer and for poor. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. Above all others. Above all others. Until death do we part. Until, until death do us part. Or until Christ returns. Or until Christ returns. I pledge my faithfulness to you. I pledge my faithfulness to you. Lauren, please take this ring and put it on Grant's finger. There we go. I, Lauren. I, Lauren. Choose you, Grant. Choose you, Grant. To be my lawfully wedded husband. To be my lawfully wedded husband. From this day forward. From this day forward. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. For better and for worse. For better and for worse. For richer or for poorer. For richer or for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. Above all others. Above all others. Until death do we part. Until death do us part. Or until Christ returns. Or until Christ returns. I pledge my faithfulness to you. I pledge my faithfulness to you. Now, this brings forth. Grant, when I think about your own story and your declaration before God and your pleading with Him to help you in life, I think about what God did not do. He didn't raise your IQ. He didn't flood you with wealth. He didn't give you instantaneous popularity. He transformed you. And now, God transforms you both to be a husband and wife. So, with that, I now pronounce you husband and wife. Grant, you may now kiss your bride. <laughs> I present to you for the first time, Mr. and Mrs. Grant Louder.